these guys. I hate, I hate that part. I hate the BSCH. Are you, are you guys in it? No. Okay, good. No, we're not. Good. He actually, he also hates the broadcasting part yeah, of Sega. It's so bad. And that girl, Tuna? Is that her name? <laughs> I have no I'm idea. I'm starting it up now. Okay, okay. Okay, wait. I already started recording up there, so. You can edit that. <laughs> we can also edit this. <laughs> Alright. Now that we've learned how to. Alright, three, wait, two... Hello. To confirm, Five. I'm doing the introduction. Yes, Ramsey yes. Kifflo. Yes, Kifflo. <clears throat> I got gotcha. you. I'm going to have you announce your own name. No, right. no, no. Okay. No. Can I get a hello? Can I get a hail? No, <laughs> hey no. Okay, hey okay. okay. No. All right. All right. Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to the second edition of the State College Football Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Hosselter. I'm Nathan Grella. And today we have a very special guest star, our first. It will always hold a very special place in our heart. It is Ramsey Kifolo. Yeah. Not Kifolo. Not Kifolo. Yes, Nathan. Definitely not Kifolo. So we're very excited to get things started today. Um, let's have Ramsey introduce himself. Hello, Ramsey Kifolo. I'm a starting right guard for the State College Low Lions. Uh, thank you for having me on. Awesome. And why don't you tell us a little more about yourself? What is your class? You know, what grade are you in? Um, what is your favorite and least favorite part of playing offensive line? Okay. Um, for right now, I'm a sophomore. Like, there's four days left in school, so I'm going to be a junior. Best thing about offensive line, man, pancaking people. Pan you, yes. pancake people <laughs> you pancake people, and then you get up. And looked at your running back is in the end zone. I love that. Worst part, of, worst part of offensive line is like leg day. You really don't get <laughs> touchdowns, you know. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I wish I could be quarterback. It's not gonna happen though. But I love being O line. So yeah. All right. So I guess we'll go through some other news around the league right now. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, one thing, last week we talked a little bit about State High's uh, demoralizing, disgusting, disappointing 3-2 to two win slash loss. Um, this week we have another disappointing loss, this time to everybody's least favorite team in the entire state besides Bishop Guilfoyle. It is Pine Richland. Yes, we talked about it a lot last week, how much we hated Pine Richland, and this week they put quite the beat down the men's lacrosse team at state high um an 18 to 2 beat down so when we say beat down we really mean it this could be a football score with a safety but it's not it's lacrosse um yeah, yeah so extremely disappointing yeah especially since we kind of wanted to go to states kind of like the football team and the basketball team yeah <laughs> it's yeah. the same for every sport it's just annoying. <laughs> Pine Richland, they are our biggest block in the road. Uh, yeah. Do you have any experience playing with Pine Richland, Ramsey? Yeah, I played against Pine Richland in uh, the quarterfinals. Yeah, after Delaware States. Valley. Yeah, after yeah. Delaware Valley. Man, that was so heartbreaking because going into halftime, it was tied up with the best team in the state. Come out. Five-star quarterback. Yeah, yeah, I really don't know what happened. We. I feel like as an offense and as a defense, we couldn't get we could get it together, but like I don't know. To be honest, that was sad. Like, yeah. like to me, it was sad. I was like, because I really wanted to go on. I wanted to experience Hershey. I wanted to experience States. So, yeah. Real disappointing, actually. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you know, it's it's disappointing, but it's also very encouraging because um, one thing that was pointed out to us is that we stay high played a closer game to Pine Richland than pretty much anyone last year. And when I say pretty much anyone, that's including one other team. So really, I mean, we, we gave them a heck of a match, especially yeah. for a public school. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That Except for, recruit. yeah, we're, we played definitely the best against them out of any public school. Yeah. They actually are public school. Yeah, what? They are public school. Yeah. Oh, excuse are they? Yeah, they are, are they? a public school. Let's fact check that. All right, we're fact checking. <laughs> Nathan, you're on. Is Pine Richland a pub public school? And the results are in. No, they are not. I guess not. Thanks, Gazzy. Uh -huh. You block 
the Allegheny County Public School site. <laughs> Let's give a clap for Skazdy. <laughs> oh, it is a public school. All right. Good job, Ramsey. <laughs> Thankfully, we have our ace fact checker, Ramsey Kiflo, here. I mean, you all know how my fact checking experience went last week. Um, Nathan, do you want to elaborate on the girls' lacrosse losses? The they lost game? to Mannheim Township. Wow. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Both of these losses, the men's and girls, was sad because they were both on a really, really good run. Yes. Like, I predicted states for both. Like, yeah. maybe state finals. Actually, no. State finals for both. Because they were just that good. They were blowing people out of the water every single game. Yeah. All year. So, it was just a disappointing loss to see that happen. Yeah. Well, sure. you look you look on the lacrosse team and you compare them to, like, the state high college or state college the offensive line they're, they're both stacked <laughs> they got like ryan franks they have so many good athletes they oh got gosh, joe ryan schwab franks. i'm only naming people that i know are on the team <laughs> brady dorner okay brady dorner there's a nice crossover athlete for you guys we've seen what his feet can do in football and we've seen what his feet can do in lacrosse and I gotta say it's impressive he's certainly a tricky Tricky little dude. He's a good athlete. He's a very good athlete. Don't sleep on Brady. Do not sleep on Brady. For sure. So, in other news, um, our very own James Pone, one of my favorites in all of state high football, phenomenal guy, he was named to the Western PA, he was added to the Western PA Football Review. So, this is, this is certainly a bit of an honor, you know, it's yeah. putting him out there. For for such a crappy website, it is a pretty it is a pretty good honor to be in their one of their previews. They do three every day for about a hundred days, so that means you're at least the top three hundred player in the state. Yeah, that, or in the Western PA. Yeah, do not expect some some good interface from this website. Yes, it's like it came straight out of two thousand two, uh, but it does have James Pone, and his face certainly makes this page much better. Yes, and of course Ramsey was also on it. <laughs> yeah, I was on day four out of a hundred, but sadly, when you go to the link, his website crashed or was hacked, something like that. So every information from day one to day sixteen, the day sixteen is yeah. gone, and disappointing not for just me, but everybody else I was on it. Yeah, yeah, I take our word for it, and the the fine, truthful word of words of Ramsey Kiffalo. He was on day four. And would, would you like to elaborate a little bit on what that meant for you as a player? Man, that was so satisfying. Just because, like, uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff, like, you don't really see old linemen, like, get on that. You see the skill positions, which, which is, they deserve it, too, because they're out there doing the work that you see. But old linemen, you, you're not really seeing the work they're doing because yeah. they're in the trenches. So me and James, I know for James that was, like, a really big accomplishment for him. Same for me. I was really grateful to be on that. Thank you to Western PA Football. Yeah. Just just looking at uh, James's paragraph they wrote about him, the first sentence says he has a skill and set of an elite D1 elite offensive D1. lineman. You heard it from us, folks. Elite D1. And only lacks the weight and experience. And I'm pretty sure that's what everyone thought about him. And it's also pretty true. <laughs> He's got the height, man. He's got the skill. He can move good. He's definitely a D1 lineman. He's got the wingspan of J.J. Watt. True, yeah. true. <laughs> For us, I, I know Nathan and I were both commenting extensively on his phenomenal footwork. Um, from the practices we've seen, he really moves well. Um, and with those long arms, I mean, he can really, he can do some damage, you know. That's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. You need some we, need, we need to make that, that art. Line. We need to make T-shirts about that. So, like when we make the green T-shirts, yeah. We on the back. Um, we needed to say that's a lot of a damage. A little update <laughs> by by some amount of popular request. We are working on a green shirt kid T-shirt. We have no idea when it will be available, but we're hoping to get one for some of our interviewees. So Ramsey can expect one. Okay. Who knows when? It might not be until next year. But <laughs> well, at some make point. sure it's at least size extra large. It will not. <laughs> Yeah, you will find a beautiful fit for this shirt with the State College Football Podcast logo and some variation of Totally Not Green shirt kit on the back. And, of course, this will be in green. 
So all of you guys can speculate over which one of us is the true green shirt kid. You know what you gotta do? You gotta put a little kid on the back. Just like a random kid. Like, <laughs> just like a... You know when you see like the NBA logo, it's just like a white figure. Yeah. That's what you gotta do. But a white kid like catching a football in a green shirt, that'd be funny. Actually, that'd be good. That'd actually be really if you good. Google green shirt kid, it does like the green shirt kitten meme. <laughs> it's 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 interesting. It's like the kid on the beach that's like looking at the camera wheel. Yes. Yeah, I know oh, what yeah. you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. So we're gonna transition back to the um, the football subject of our podcast. Yeah. And another big announcement: the Mid Pen named their top one hundred players for the conference. Also. Um, one thing that I did caught and did not correct, unfortunately, last time, and that my dad gave me some crap for, State College, or, excuse me, Altoona did not just join the PIAA. Um, I think most of you know that. The PIAA is all of Penn State, or yeah. Pennsylvania Athletics. They, they moved, joined the Continental. They moved Penn from the Whipple to Mid-Penn Commonwealth, which now they all play us, which is our senior night game. Yeah. So... But they did not just join the entire state of Pennsylvania playing football. So, pretty egregious mistake, but, you know, just want to point that out. But in any case, the Mid-Pen, which now includes Altoona, named their top 100 players, and it is loaded with state high. Yeah. So, if you if you go through, like, the first, like, 30 slides in the slideshow, this is, a, this is hard work, by the way. If you go through, like, the first 30 slides, there's at least, like, 15 Central Dolphin players, and you start to get worried. And then and then, and then you get to the meet. You get to, like, over 40, and you see, well, Tom Buha comes in at 70. And then over 40, you get Jeremy Bullock at 32, Tyson Brennan at 28, Titus Thompson at 27, Sam Nape at 22, which... And then you only see, like, two Central Dolphin players after 50. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, say, I don't know how to... Very impressive that, that Sam Knight, who was a freshman this year, is at sitting at 22 for the entire Mid Pen Conference. That is quite the accomplishment. Yeah. Then, then you get into the meet top 15. Isaiah Edwards listed at 12, which is a lot higher than I actually yeah, thought he would gotta be. Yeah, gotta say, um, Isaiah really, really phenomenal player last year. But I think we're all surprised at just how much people are recognizing him. I know a couple years ago, my dad was complaining. He's like, Saquon Barkley is the best running back in all college football, and, and nobody outside of the Big Ten really recognizes him for that. Well, we all know who that how that went, and I think we're seeing at least some of that effect for Isaiah. We've all seen his talent. Now he's getting recognized. Ramsey, do you have any um, opinions on skill of Isaiah? He's a fast runner. He runs the ball hard. Um Sorry to transition, but for all these guys, not just Isaiah, they're all tremendous hard workers. Yeah. They will put in the time in the weight room, in the classroom, on the field, during practice, all the time, which we all try to do. But a lot of people do it. Like these guys, they do it a lot. So yeah, there's a good reason they're on here. All right. So after that, you get into the top ten, and we got Cohen Russell at six, Tommy Freiberg at four, and Keaton Ellis at two, which... And that's just incredible. Yeah. So, this is really says a lot about our team. The fact that we have basically one third, almost one third of the entire top ten yeah. in our pockets. We have a phenomenal, phenomenal slot receiver, Cone Russell. An incredible quarterback, Tommy Freiberg. And I know we've already talked a lot about who we have to back him up. And it certainly is looking bright for Stay High. And number two, Keaton Ellis. And, I mean, what more can you say? Already committed to Penn State. You know, D1, Power 5 school. He's an incredible player. Incredible guy. You know, uh, I've known him for almost my entire life. Went to kindergarten with him. And I got to say, it's been amazing to watch him grow up. Uh, I think we all knew when he was even really young that he was a special man, a special athlete. And it's amazing to see all that. Hard work that Ramsey was talking about paying off. Um, one thing that I, uh, Ramsey pointed our attention to just re just now is when you're listening to all these players, you're thinking, man, you know, stay high. Their sound is stacked, right? And so um, I wanted to quote Zach Betts, a good friend of mine, who is also a defensive tackle for stay high. 
and he said, and I quote, I think we can contend for the state championship this year. Now what a powerful, powerful statement that is. And I know Coach Lintel said something similar at the spring kickoff last week. Um, so we have lots of people that are recognizing this amount of talent. Ramsey, yeah. do you have a thought on that? Um, yeah, I think that's like the mindset. Well, it should be the mindset for almost everybody, every team in the state. Even if you're 0-10 last year or 11-1, and your mindset going into the next year is we're going to win a state championship. And that's our mindset right now, going to spring practice, going to lift every day going to school every day. We're going to do so much work to get to the state championship, and we're not going to just be there. We're going to win it. We're going to walk out with a trophy. So I, he did say we can contend. I think we can, too. I hope we can. Um, everybody's putting in the work, too, so I, I see us in the future going there. Yeah. Well, you got to look at other teams in the state, too. Like, Pine Richland loses a ton of talent. Um, yeah. St. Joseph's and... I think it's St. Joseph's Prep. Prep of yeah. in Philly. They're always going to be good. They're always going to be in the championship. Like, So the, these are the teams you need to start preparing yourself to and not against like Harrisburg or or some Pittsburgh high schools. you you got to start comparing yourself to like elite yeah. talent and seeing their, and looking up their players and see, trying to match yourself with them. Although i got to say, I think we can all recognize that Harrisburg has had an exceptional last couple yeah. of years. And I hope, as a resident of central Pennsylvania that probably feels closer to Harrisburg than Pittsburgh or Philly, that they will continue to do well, because I always am proud to see these great mid-pen teams. These, you know, we always talk about how in college football you like to see your conference succeed. It's the same thing with the mid-pen. You know, you want to see them do well. You want to see these central PA boys do well, and I'm talking about South Central and Harrisburg. They got another Saquon on their team this year, too. That is a bold <laughs> statement. No, I'm not talking about Saquon Barkley. I'm talking about they have a kid named Saquon like they did last <laughs> oh, year. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, last year they had a kid named Saquon Anderson Butts. Yes, I who remember is him. Being, who's who a is, beast right Yeah, now. he's really he is, good. He's really good. Yeah. He's got the height. Um, I know that they could that they were saying that he could play um, outside linebacker, corner, or wide receiver in college. Any position, I think, of those three, he could. He's just that athletic, has a skill, has a height. I think he can. Yeah. So he gradu he's graduating like this week, and he'll be joining Penn State next season. So right now, sophomore next year, defensive and tight end, they got Saquon Carter Barton. Huh. So for seven straight years, they'll have someone named Saquon on their team, which is longer than Saquon has been on Penn State, <laughs> which is interesting to say the least. Yeah, you, you wonder how many kids are going to be named Saquon in the future, depending on the OG Saquon success at the Giants I mean, this year. Maybe a little more after that, uh, um, which, uh, the, the Fiesta Bowl win. Yeah. So. If he would have won the Heisman, which, sitting here, we go to, we're right next to Penn State. We all think he should have won the Heisman, but he should have won the Heisman. He definitely yeah. should have won, won the Heisman. He should have definitely won the Heisman. And nothing against Baker Mayfield, he's a. Great athlete, great quarterback, but Saquon, if you out there, man, you should have won the Heisman. Saquon is a generational talent, not not a yearly talent. Um, you know, we see we see amazing quarterbacks on a regular basis. You know, we've saw we've seen a lot of them, especially in the last couple of years. But Saquon is straight up generational. I mean, his stats at the combine are insane. Benched more than Joe Thomas. Think about that. He's a running back that ran a ridiculous 40-yard dash, had a 41-inch vo vertical leap, and he benched one more rep than Joe Thomas. That yeah. is insane. He also benched more than Orlando Brown Jr., which Orlando Brown Jr., in my opinion, is probably the best tackle in the draft. Now, you might look at that and be like, I mean, he went in the fifth rounds. Uh, yeah, some of his combine stuff did drop his draft stock, but... My opinion, skill, best tackle in the, not the league, but the draft. And he benched more than the best tackle in the draft, which is yeah. a pretty big accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if you look, again, at the top 100 players, you should also look at the top five, basically. Uh -huh. And you should tell yourself, 
we're playing everyone in the top five that isn't us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that is also kind of scary. You got Kane Everson, who's a left-handed quarterback slash cornerback for Harrisburg. He just transferred. Okay. He just wow. transferred to Harrisburg. Yeah. Um, I heard some rumors that he might just be playing defense. I don't know. He could be playing both. I wouldn't be surprised if he does play both. Yeah. But that's scary for him to and transfer there. And you got Andre there. White there, too. Andre White, man. So. They're going to have a good team. It's going to be a good yeah. game. That is going to be a good game. Too bad it's at 1 o'clock. Am I right? <laughs> In Harrisburg, downtown, on a Saturday, when everyone wants to be at home watching Penn State or preparing to watch ooh, Penn State. Ooh. Penn State has a bye week that week. Actually, like, Penn State has a bye week that week, so we go down there at 1 o'clock. I forget the exact date. Any, anybody know? I, don't, I forget October the exact, 6th. October 6th. Wow, look at that. Our stat man is on top of it. Shout out to Nathan Grella. Yeah, man. Nice. I gotta make sure I don't knock over next computer. <laughs> <laughs> so, now you, you've heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Ramsey Kiflo. You have no excuses not to be at the Harrisburg game. All right, it's going to be a phenomenal game. How do you expect the level of play to be at that game? I mean, can you understate it? Really? Oh, man, that's going to be a good game. I'm not going to say that, but I think it could be a, one of our toughest games, if not the toughest game. Um, last year, we were tied with them at halftime, came out, put some big numbers on the board. Hopefully we can do that again, but this year come out with a dub. Yeah. And I think our explosive offense will do that, and I don't really know how their offense is, is going to be this year because, again, there's rumors with Kane Everson not playing offense. But if he does play offense, they're going to have an explosive offense because they have a running back slash slot receiver coming back who's going to be a sophomore or a junior. I forget his name, but he was pretty good. So it's going to be explosive to see them. It's going to be a good game. Our defense, I think our defense is going to be good this year. And you know they're going to step up. They're going to step up the biggest times they can. And that will probably be one of the biggest yeah. games. Yeah, well, yeah. How, how do you, this is just a transition since we're still talking about the schedule. How do you feel about St. Augustine Prep? Have you watched, like, any film on them, heard anything about them? Because, like, we have no idea how good they are. Um, to be honest, I don't have much film on them. I've asked Coach Lentel a couple times for film. He doesn't have film. We know what their record was last year, but that was last year. Yeah. What, how are they going to be this year? They have new players coming in. Yeah. I went to the Penn State Blue and White game, and I talked to a kid who was from uh, New Jersey. He doesn't go to St. Augustine, but I asked him about St. Augustine. He said, they're a good team. They play good people every yeah. week. So they play good people for 10 weeks straight plus yeah, playoffs. New Jersey prep schools are really good. Yeah, so that's. I, th I think that's going to be another good game. Yeah. Well, it's at six o'clock in New Jersey, so yeah, that you're probably gonna have to leave school at like nine. <laughs> yeah, well, that's gonna be like when school starts. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You, you get like what twenty minutes. Yeah, remember next year? I think are, are we confirmed for that schedule change thing? Eight forty-five or something like yeah, that. that. Yeah, guy on it. yeah. Look, look it up. I'm not sure. We, we, it's, we, it's either nine confirmed. ten or eight forty. Yeah, yeah. It, I think it's at like eight forty-five. So. We might have the possibility of basically not even going to school that day if you're a football player. That's exciting. Miss out on Spanish class. You know, that's oh always my gosh. a good time. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get us started on Spanish right now. Like, <laughs> all right. So, uh, in the meantime, um, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, go another transition. Um, let's, let's just ask Ramsey a few questions here, uh, just in general stuff that, you all and myself personally, I know that I'm interested in. So we'll just kick it off with, you know, how do you feel going into the summer? You know, um, is there any work that you feel like you need to get done before practice starts? How are you feeling about your level of play? How are you feeling about your football, your football knowledge at this point? Knowledge. Like me, myself. Um, I feel like I know the offense pretty good because I was on offense last year. I got to be next to two great seniors that left, uh, Robert Knockman and Colin DeBoof. So having them next to me really, I think, matured me a lot more. Uh, the offense, knowing the offensive plays, which is good. Uh, before practice, like me, before or after practice, I think like I just need to 
first step off the ball needs to be faster. My punch needs to be harder. A lot of technical stuff that you look at offensive linemen and you're like, wow, they're doing that really good. Or you look at me and you're like, yeah, he's doing that okay. Like, I need to work on that, and I know I need to work on it, so I'll put as much time as I can into working on that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. do, do you project yourself, like, more as a guard or a tackle, or do you think you'll play in equal time at each position this year? Because... Right now, guard. All right. So right now, guard. Um, I know I am taking some snaps for center, but that's, like, worst-case scenario. That's, like, Jason Cameron goes yeah. down, so we have a backup center. Yeah. Because I'm willing to do anything for the team. Because, like, we've heard rumors that Darcy is going to, might crack the offensive line, or Shane Cole might move to defense. Like, these are some interesting rumors. So, like, or Lieb might crack the starting offensive line, and they might platoon two or three guys. So, like, where you're situated in the offensive line is key to where everybody else is right now. Yeah, I don't really know about, like, those three guys you just talked about much. I know they definitely have Addison... Like, he's projected to play defense. Yeah. Um, Logan and Shane, all I know is they're playing offense as far as I know. Yeah. Um, Shane's either either tackle. Right now it's looking more like right tackle. Yeah. Because we just lost a right tackle. Um, Logan, I feel like Logan could probably be in the running for a right tackle, too. If they really need a right tackle, they might put Logan in there. Logan, Shane. I know Alex Simmons. They were, might be talking about him, but he wants to play defense, so they don't really know right now. Yeah. I'll let the coaches decide. Yeah, it's so early in the year, you know. I mean, we're talking spring football. You look at even, you know, some college teams, a lot of college teams, there's a lot of uncertainty for these line positions, you know. I mean, so this, this is nothing unusual, and if anything, you know, like we said last week, we just want to reiterate that all of this – Supposed confusion, all this apparent confusion is a very good thing because you have so many options on the offensive line. Yeah. You have so many options on the defensive line. So, like, who who do you think would be, like, the biggest loss from last year? And who do you think should replace them? Um, For, like, biggest loss, do you mean, like, O-lineman or just team? O-lineman and team, I guess. For O-lineman, probably Robert Nachman. Yeah. That man was just an animal. He would... Throw kids. I remember he sent me a picture after one of the games. He had a kid 15 yards the other way on the ground, and I was dying. I was so, it was so funny because everybody else was up the field running. This man was like laying back and had a pancake. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh. Um, for the team, that's a hard one. Probably Brandon Clark. Yeah. Because you're losing a lot of height. Yeah, that's a lot right of now. height. That's a lot of height. Uh, really good vertical we're losing, yeah. too. And good hands. But I'm not saying, like, we have wide receivers right now that have good hands, are fast, uh, good vert. Yeah. They just don't have the height as Brandon. Which yeah. I think Brandon's height, like, right now. It's the one thing you're missing. Yeah, on you're this not, team. like, you're really not going to see the. Uh, I mean, Chase, Chase Longnecker, if he plays, he plays up. So, oh, like, yeah. so like, if he'll go up and make, like, a, a sick jump or something, but we saw that in a lot of the JV film. But, like, does that translate to varsity? He's just not that as tall. Yeah. So, and I think Keaton Ellis would, if he does play receiver, he projects more as, like, a slot guy. But you can't, you can't afford to move him in right I think, now. I think he's going to be more... On the outside? Yeah. but Especially for this team. Yeah. Brandon's height, we're going to be losing that, but there's a lot of guys that can jump. They might not be able to jump as high as he could. I know Keaton can jump. Uh, Cohen Russell, that man has a crazy oh vertical. Yeah, really. I mean, it's, it's kind of freaky to watch. Yeah, because you see, like, it's not a shot at Cohen, but... How tall is he? He's like 5'5". Five, 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 seven. Five, I, I can pull that up right So now. he's 5'7". You see this little man coming out of the air, and you're like, oh, my gosh. And the same thing goes for... um. He's 5'8". Okay, 5'8". Same yeah. thing goes for <laughs> Loki Howe. Oh, yeah. my gosh, Loki. What a man. <laughs> you know, I I was just sitting there. Reminds me of uh, Yoda, the Attack of the Clones. <laughs> yeah. He's just flying around Count Dooku. That's, that's basically... You know, if you guys haven't seen Cohen play slot receiver, 
it's crazy. That's basically what yeah. it is, yeah. How tall is Loki? Loki is 5'7". We we got a lot of good slapbacks. Okay. You got you got Dre Green in there, oh, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, Dre. And the... So, like, where are you going to play him, though? Don't forget Haskell <laughs> Catagranja. <laughs> so, Loki is... Loki's 5'7". I give that man 5'6". On a good day. 5'6 <laughs> and a half. But if you don't... If you've never seen it, he takes two steps and can dunk a basketball, which is pretty crazy. So can Cohen, but Cohen has two inches on him. Both insane verticals. So, yeah, Dre Green... Dre Green, yeah, just finishing his freshman year. Freshman yeah. year, right We're now. We're hearing about him that he's like really good, but like he needs to work on route running. I think which... he's good. I, I think he runs nice routes. Yeah. Um. I think he's good. Um. One thing I think he could do, probably get in the weight room a little bit more. See, he's not that big. He has muscle on him. Like you know, he can run. You know, he can jump. You know, he can catch. Get in the weight room. Get him a little faster, a little stronger, a little more meat on him. I think. He's a definitely a good talent from a senior year. Yeah, all right. Well, actually, I want to shift this because Ed, I gave a speech about this in English, and everybody laughed at me. I think we need a spring game, all right? We need a spring game. It would make it better. I can read my speech for you if you want, but we need a spring game. It would make it more exciting. What, what do you think? Okay, I heard you guys talk about this last week. <laughs> The atmosphere at the Big Ten, I mean, not Big Ten, blue and white game, that was a great asthma yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, I actually saw you there. Like, I was yeah. waiting I was waiting in line for the porta potty <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah, you know it's a good story when it starts off like that. Um, but, like, I was just sitting there, and I was, and I saw this huge mass of, like, recruits and their families come in, and I saw you come walk by with Isaiah Edwards and I was like, hey, look, it's Ramsey. He must be being recruited by James Franklin right now. I and, wish, man. I wish. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then I see Keaton go in and then I see Devin Ford drive by in a golf cart and I yelled at him because I was wearing my Penn State jersey and I know I could have. And I yelled, Devin Ford, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's still committed to Penn State. <laughs> um, uh, a spring game. I think that would be cool. I don't know if I would like it, though. Like, I feel like it would be like more 7-on-7 seven seven because if you come to our spring practices, there's no helmets, no shoulder pads, yeah. really no contact. For us linemen, it really wouldn't be much, but it, for the skill players, it would be a 7-on-7. Seven seven. Yeah, that's one thing we were talking about last week. It would probably be flag football. And I just want to say as a you know message to Rams and all you guys, um, you know, we we accept all variations of opinions on football on the State College Football Podcast. But so we you, don't accept opinions that are against the spring game. Uh, <laughs> that is false. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to email us and tell us how much we suck because we want to flag football 7-on-7 seven seven spring game, well, you're welcome to do so. There is, like, we have, like, a version of, like, a spring-summer game. It's an inter-squad scrimmage. And you have to look what date that is. I forget off the top of my head. We might have two. I I know we at least have one. So there's your spring game, Nathan. All there right. you go. Like, come out to that. I know last year we had refs. Okay, last I... year we had people in the stands. Come out to watch, man. Do you know what... Do you have any yeah. idea what time of year that was? Was that more in the summer? Like July, August kind of? That was more in the summer because I know we did have full pads. But if you want your spring game, there's your spring, spring game. game. There's your spring game. It's not immediately in May, but... Well, like, it's not something you can get hyped about. It's not something you can bring, yeah, like, 7th had... and 8th graders in and have them, like, yeah, watch. Yeah, it was. Because and... we had music blasting. It was a great time, man. I was, like... I don't even know if they count that as a practice. That was, like, the best practice all year. Is it, is it open to everyone? Oh, yeah. Like, okay. a lot. Like, there was people in the stands. We had music blasting. Like, we need to take that and move it to, like, the week after prom. No, no. Because we're not, you, we're not you ready can, then. You can advertise this in school. We're not ready then get, because we got... It can be like a pep rally. We got states for track, which, shout out to Cohen. Cohen just took second in states for the 100-meter dash. So we got guys like him, guys like Isaiah, a lot of other guys in states... So we'd be losing like a lot of people. A lot of people want to be or like, there. Or like move it net to now. A lot of the most exciting players that you know really make us spring practice to spring practice. 
apparently will be missing. So that's certainly something to consider. I will die on a bloody hill over this spring game. Like <laughs> inner squad scrimmage. One thing you have to know about Nathan is that he's all about the hype. Yes. I think pretty much my first interaction with him was, for some reason, him showing me a Virginia Tech hype video when I didn't know him hardly at all. But it was cool. It was really cool. If you guys haven't checked it out, you should. I think it's look, on his YouTube look, page. Look up my YouTube channel, The Starting Bench Warmer, and it's just all the hype you will ever need in your life. And maybe at some point that hype, maybe, possibly, would include a state high scrimmage game, but not if Ramsey kept looking out, but apparently. <laughs> and you know what? That's cool. That's cool, because, right. like I said, at the State College we, Football we, Podcast... We accept all opinions, I, I even if they're wrong. I personally accept a variety of opinions <laughs> you know, as the moderator, possibly, of this debate. You know, if you really want a spring game, you could go to our athletic director, Weekland, and Littell. Get some connections in there. Maybe they say, yeah, we can have a flag football game. Because we're not going to be in full pads. Oh, yeah, and that, I think that is one thing that we mentioned last week, is that it would have to be... You know, when I when I tried to fact check Nathan on the spring game, one you know one thing I said is that you know you can't have contact until much later in the year. Yeah. So, because like you're looking at like college of spring games, but the thing with that they've been practicing full pads since like January. Maybe that's a little too far. Like maybe I don't know as much, but they practice full pads like Constantly. really early. We practice full pads in like July. Like, yeah. maybe June. So, yeah. That's one fact yeah. on the spring game for you, Nathan. Um, so, moving on to from that lengthy discussion. Um, one thing that we are definitely interested in talking about, at least for a little bit, and I know we had a slight conversation on this before the podcast, but, you know, one thing that gets fo football fans from all levels excited is when... One of their very own is um, appears to be progressing to the next level, the next level of play. So yeah, Ramsey, saw that with Keaton Ellis. Yeah, yeah. it's you know nothing. Jeremy gets, Jeremy Bullock just got two offers to Albany and Robert Morris. Yeah, and you know Keaton has brought such an energy to our program, and so we we're wondering, uh, Ramsey, has there been any you know possibilities of college offers? You know, I know you're you're a sophomore this year, so it's definitely a little different from Keaton. Um, are you expecting any offers next year? What's what's your whole thoughts? What's your what are your thoughts on that entire process? Um, at this moment, there are no offers on the table. I have talked to some coaches. I haven't talked to a lot. Um, man, I hope I get an offer. That'd be so cool. I would love to. I would love to go to college for to play football. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and one thing to consider, like we said, I mean, he's only a sophomore. There's pretty much nobody out there that gets an offer when they're a sophomore, you know. Yeah. I mean, there, you know, you can Back point check. to a few. You <laughs> can point to a few. I know there, I think this was last year that some seventh grader got an offer from Michigan or something stupid like that. Yeah. Maybe he was the green shirt kid, but, I mean, who <laughs> green knows. Green shirt kid. There was, an, uh, <laughs> there was an 11-year-old from Hawaii that got an offer from Hawaii University and another school to play football. But that's, like, rare. And that's Hawaii. Yeah, that's, like, that's like really rare to see, like... Hawaii, you'll take that chance. Yeah, like, how many, like, how many Alabama recruits are under the age of 16? Like, let's be honest. Probably two max get offers when they're sophomores. Yeah. yeah. So, I think, you know, us at the State College Football Podcast and State High in general... Definitely have high hopes for Ramsey. You know, we're expecting great things. Thank you. For sure. Thank you, man. So, um, on the same note, if you could improve one thing about your game, one thing about your, you know, it could be your footwork, it could be your explosiveness, it could be your football knowledge, you know, reading plays and things. If you could improve just one thing about your game that you feel would take you to the next level, what would it be? Getting off the line, man, I feel like, like I was saying earlier, you watch a lot of linemen, they get off the line, and they got people on the ground before the people can even react. Um, I feel like last year, I would get off the line a little slower, so people would have more of an advantage to see what I'm doing, and I would like to get off the line a little faster so I can see what they're about to do. So if I know they're about to swim, if they're about to rip, 
I know what they're about to do, so I can counter. And so yeah, probably getting off the line, first step, punch. To me, that all goes together as one. So I need to work on that. I know that as myself. Yeah. Yeah, when you look at these NFL offensive linemen, you know, people often that aren't as familiar with the ins and outs of football don't really understand how insanely quick these guys are. You know, yeah. how agile they are. I mean, I've seen this ridiculous video of the Cowboys legend Larry, Larry Allen. Allen. I was about to say yeah. that. Larry Allen, fun fact, is my favorite... I won't say favorite NFL player because my favorite NFL player slash athlete of all time is Bo Jackson, but favorite offensive lineman slash uh, NFL player, Larry oh, Allen. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've seen this absolutely ridiculous video. I'm a Cowboys fan, by the way, so you can give Where us... Where he runs down the Saints yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, 325-pound guard. He looks like a bear, and he just comes barreling out the side of the frame, and you're like, what is this? He looks like a train. He's just... I mean, he's just moving. He's cranking. Yeah. He tackles some poor and like, cornerback. It's ridiculous. To be honest, like when I say like first step and all that stuff, I saw that from Larry Allen because like I was like watching my film like, oh that's okay, and then I watched Larry Allen. I'm like, I'm in awe, man, because he gets off the line and has the guy buried five yards deep before he can really even get out the stance. He is just an all-time legend. Shout out to Larry Allen. That's give me so much inspiration and that that is great to hear another fan of this incredible athlete uh, we'll try to get a video of Larry Allen destroying Saints player off the sideline uh, back in the day we'll try to get that posted to our Facebook page I have no idea who the heck you're talking about oh so. my goodness <laughs> dude number 73 Larry Allen yeah Larry well, Allen I grew up on names legend. like uh, Phil Lodeholt Oh, man, Steve, Larry... And Steve Hutchinson. Man, Larry so, like, Allen was, like, before my time. I wasn't even born. I don't even know if I was... A, I, my sister might not have even been born. My sister was, like, 22. I don't even think she was born. Yeah, Larry Allen was a long time ago, and that man's an all-time legend. Maybe 95? No, my sister wouldn't have been born. 95, I think. Yeah. yeah, so he was... He played for 14 seasons for the Cowboys... And um, he played, yeah, 1994 to 2005. So a little bit of an older player. But let me tell you, if you haven't seen Larry Allen, you're definitely missing something. Uh, so definitely a great player to take inspiration from. Yeah. For yeah. sure. All right. So who's ready for some more offensive line speculation? Oh my goodness! I'm gonna so like, I'm gonna we, hand the microphone this. over to Nathan and Ramsey because they've got this topic on lockdown. I say. All right. So basically, you you named a couple players, like earlier, but what would be your starting five right now? Oh my gosh! I'm gonna have to have you burn down all the bridges right now. Starting like, five. Um, probably gonna keep the same. Left side is last year, probably yeah. James Pohn, because he's a beast. Yeah. And a real sleeper, in my opinion, Adam Van Horn. Yes. Uh, a lot of people don't, a lot of people yeah. don't talk about Adam Van Horn, and maybe it's because he doesn't talk. If you know Adam, he doesn't yeah. talk. He's a great offensive lineman. He gets off the ball so smooth. Uh, not much more to say. He's just a really good offensive yeah. lineman. Probably next coming in is Jason Cameron, because... Yeah. He did play two games last year, start two games. He finished a lot of games, but he is a good center. Um, hopefully myself at guard, hopefully no one beats me out. Hopefully I can run the table once again as a guard and be a guard. And then for tackle, man, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we don't know right now. There's so it's many. Like, you could put Shane there. There's so you many people for Addison tackle. Addison Darcy there. Put Alex Simon there. Simeon. 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 Maniac. <laughs> um, Logan Lieb, probably. Alex Simon, probably. Addison Darson, Darcy, probably. Shane Cole, probably. There's so many guys that yeah. uh, right tackle. That's going to be a fun competition yeah. to watch. And I know this. he doesn't want this to happen. Titus Thompson, if anybody, that man is... Athlete, him and his brother yeah. Jeremy, 
two great athletes. They're twins. 27th in mid pen. Yeah, so. uh, he could play offense easy. So yeah. it could be between five a guys. Against. Yeah, literally yeah. so many guys for right tackle. I I'll let the coaches decide that. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, I mean, I would be fine with that line. I mean, we're so deep on both sides right now. Um, who would who would be the defensive guy that you would least likely want to go up against? Beside Titus, we already talked oh, about Oh, beside him. Titus? And I know for sure last year, I can definitely throw a name off the top last year. Yeah. Jackson Heasley. Yes. That man was a beast. I don't care how good you are at offensive line, he's going to throw you out of the way and sack your quarterback. He was really good, but he graduated. Good luck to him at IUP. He's going to shred it up there. Yeah. Um... I was surprised he didn't get any like D1 offers or at least D1A or D1AA or whatever. Like, because you see Tommy Freiberg and you're, he's going to get D1AA. Jackson is such a great athlete. Such a great defensive lineman, too. Yeah. So, yeah. But probably this year, other than Titus. Man, I don't know. You're not, that... you're not making the team look so good right now. <laughs> No, it's see, it's not that the team looks bad. It's that Ramsey oh, yeah. flow looks amazing. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Titus is so good, and so is Zach. But a lot of our defensive linemen. I can't just name two guys. I can name everybody on the defensive line. Yeah, they are really good at defensive line. Um, Zach Betts. Zach Betts knows how to get in your head, and yes, <laughs> he play, he plays the mental game like better than anybody ever. That man's like a psychiatrist out in the field. You just like he he just tells you something random, and you're like, "What?" Gets you off track, and he knows how to get through you. Like he can rip, he can do anything, and he'll get past you. Yeah. Um, Dylan Ernst. Dylan Ernst has the height, weight, aggressiveness. The hair. <laughs> the hair. Post Malone before the fame. <laughs> uh, Dylan Ernst, another really good defensive lineman. And then Addison. I haven't seen much from Addison. I know his film from Maine looked really good. Yeah. I don't. But his team also went 0 and 8, as his mom told me. Yeah. Shout, shout out to Addison Darcy's mom, who's a fan of us on Facebook. Addison, like, I know he played defensive end at his old school, which I don't know if he'll play defensive end this year. Probably not. I would, I would. I see him as more of an in interior. Yeah, I guy. think. I think they're looking at, looking at him for interior. Which, yeah, I don't know how good he is on interior. I know he's good at D end. Uh, another name to bring up at D end is Nate Lusk. Yeah. Nate Lusk. He's probably going to start also. He he could start both ways because I know he's the backup H back. Yeah. So Nate gets off the ball really fast, so aggressive. As a defensive end, he's scary. Yeah. Like a tackle's worst nightmare. Yeah. Him and Cole Urbis, oh, yeah. I think, Cole Urbis too. are going to be the two defensive ends right now. That's so true because Cole Urbis gets so low. Like wrestling, he gets so low. Um, he's got the speed. He's got the aggressiveness. To be honest, his punch, I don't know why it's he's so strong. His first punch, he hits you, and you're like, oh. <laughs> so kind of you kind of take your pass set well, two steps back, and you're like, okay, how am I going to regain from this? So he's another good defensive lineman. Our defensive line is stacked, man. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, right now, is there any other position group that you feel is stronger than any other position group? Um, quarterbacks. I think our yeah. quarterbacks are really good. Tommy, um, Brady. Brady's a good quarterback. Tommy. Tommy has the height. Tommy has the experience. Tommy has the arm. Tommy's arm is amazing. If you've never seen his arm, it's he throws a really nice ball. And then Conrad Moore. Yeah. I haven't seen much of him. If you're I, a freshman, he's someone to get really excited about. Yeah. I haven't seen much of him. Like, I did see a little bit from a spring practice the other day. He throws a good ball, too. Yeah. His footwork is good. And he can... He looks like one of those athletes that can get out of a tough situation, you know? Absolutely. One thing that really impressed me, you know, is, as you all probably hopefully know by this point, I did... A bunch of work with the ninth grade football team the last couple of years. So I was at all of the games, you know, 
And when he's talking about, you know, an athlete that knows how to get out of tough situations, that's a phenomenal way to describe Conrad because he's, he's really shifty. He's really, really shifty, you know? We talked about how he throws a nice ball, but I gotta say, he's great in the pocket and he's great outside of the pocket. He can pretty much do it all. So, all around, you know, solid player. Good replacement for Tommy, eventually, maybe. Who knows, we might get some big wig transfer, you know? Never know these days, but right now, he's looking great, so. All right. um, another position group is wide receivers. I know yeah. you're like, but we just lost Brandon. But we have so many other good athletes yeah. and good wide receivers. Um, in my opinion, you could probably put Isaiah, even though he's a running back, uh, I bet you could put him yeah. at wide receiver you in like a tough situation. Too, yeah, yeah. Um, him, Dre, Keaton, Cohen, Chase—they're all can catch. They're all fast, shifty. Really, there's not much to say about them. Yeah. Um, another question I would have for you is: I know, I know you love Penn State. We're not going to talk about Penn State. Beside Penn State, what school? Would you want recruiting you? Would you want to go to if you if you could choose anywhere? If you were Brian Breesy and you were a hundred percent ranking on two four seven, where would you go? Man. And and don't, don't be influenced by the colors around you. As much as you probably want to. Everybody's when I say this, I feel like everybody's gonna be like, "What? I would like to go to a school in Florida. I don't know why." Uh, Just as long as it's not Miami, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I, I kind of do want to go to Miami. Oh like, gosh. either one. I wish, it's just like a dream for them to recruit me. Like, um, Florida State, University of Florida, Miami. USF. Uh, yeah, USF. UCF. UCF, the national champions. Just want some beach, man. Uh, <laughs> Georgia, I could go to Georgia. I like Georgia, the way they play. They have a lot of good recruits up and coming. Yeah. Like, if we have time to talk about that, I will talk about that. Yeah, we have plenty of time. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Alabama, you know? You might just be yeah. like, Alabama, but they have so many national championships. And I feel like being under Nick Saban would be insane. Yeah. Because he's probably one of the best college coaches to ever live. Yes. So I feel like that would be a really good experience. Other than that, I... Syracuse. I'm liking Syracuse yeah. right now. Syracuse like stayed high. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, I wish I could just get an offer from anybody. Yeah. Penn State. Really anybody. So, yeah. yeah. Are there any schools that you feel like, you know, if you were, if you did have all the offers in the world, are there any schools that you would immediately cross off your list? Man. Don't, don't do it. Don't man, do that's, it. That's hard. Because... You're so blessed to have the offers. You're like, wow. Like, there's so many offers. I don't know what I could do. But if there's one I had to cross off. Don't do it. Man, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Give me a minute. All right. I got to I gotta say, like, you know, as someone that, you know, I, I don't, I, full I mean, I would cross I off football. Tennessee personally. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a train wreck. Um... So I can't, you know, I can only imagine what it's like to be recruited. You know, to even be at Ramsey's level is a complete blessing. And even if I got an offer from the smallest school out there, has ele literally 11 people on their football team, everybody plays both ways, you know, if that's all you got, you're feeling like a million bucks. Oh, yeah. So. Like, definitely. Like, even if the smallest school in the world, like you said, offers you, like, a full ride, that is so great. Like, I have no words for that. Yeah. Because you don't care if you're playing both ways. You're going to play saving college football. Saving bucks. <laughs> you're saving money. You're playing college football at the highest level you can. That's yeah. one big thing. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I don't know what he's looking at on his computer right now, but it's probably pretty interesting. Uh, it's <laughs> it's the uh, the mid pen top hundred players. Oh, I'm okay. trying to <laughs> see what they exactly what they say about our stay high well, boys. On on that note, I would ask you like, what is one player that you are s scared to play against this year? Scared to play against? Yes. Um, that's hard. Like, or even not necessarily scared to play against, yeah. but on the 
you know, on the other side of the court, maybe excited to play against because you're yeah. excited to see what they do. But what's what's someone that you know you're going to be playing this year that is just incredible? See, I don't know if this kid is incredible. I know he, this kid right here, um, can you say his name, please? Um, that is... Uh, Mechanicsburg. Ah, got it. Joseph Bruno. So, I think he was a freshman last year, am I right? Or a uh, sophomore? Yeah, he's class of 2020, so, so he was a sophomore. So, so he was a sophomore. I remember last year, he took off. It was a kick return. One of the fastest people I've ever seen. Took off, outran some of the fastest guys on the team. And that's saying something. Uh, I actually think he outran our, some of people on our defense, which is also pretty insane because look at that. We got two, four, three guys on the defense. Yeah. Cohen and Keaton, not anything against them, but that man was fast. I think containing him could be a hard but good job like to look at because I think that could be a real good matchup. Yeah. Especially if we play Mechanicsburg, like, in the playoffs or something. Yeah. I don't know if they're a 6A school or not. And, well, it's interesting. What the description says from Penn Live is, quote, Bruno, Bruno is a burner. Don't believe it? Turn on his film and watch him just run away from you guys. Bruno Bunsen burner. Yeah. <laughs> Bruno the Bunsen burner. That guy should make for more than a few big plays come fall. So, Penn Live agrees with you, Ramsey. Yeah, um, another person... To probably be excited against, I played against him last year. Is Andre White? So if you yeah. want to go down to the bottom of the Numer list, numero uno. <laughs> yeah, so he is number one. A lot of reason that he's number one. I think it's a very, very, very close race between him and Keaton for number one. Yeah. Um, they are six and seven in the state, or two, four, seven. Or yeah. Seven and eight. So Andre White just committed to Texas A&M. Yeah. Which is surprising. Because a lot of people expected him to go to Penn State like Michael Parsons. So he went to a uh, Texas A&M, or is going to Texas A&M. And I played against him last year, but it wasn't much. He, I don't think he filled that much as like a linebacker. But I remember last year he was good. And so all the hype around him now. And it's been a year, so he has definitely improved. Do you think there's a chance they could upgrade him to a four-star even? Is he a three right now? Yeah. Um, yeah, I could probably see him going as a four star. But I'll pull up his then again I've also heard it is very hard to get stars. Get moved up in stars. So he's one of those guys that you look at him you're like he's a three star, but he's a good three star. Yeah. So hopefully hopefully we can get some hands on him next year. Hopefully he doesn't get that much tackles. Well thankfully he's not playing tight end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so boy, he's that playing, was interesting. He's playing middle linebacker. Well he's he's an eighty eight. So there's a chance if he could get moved up to like a 91 or a 92, he could go or up even to a 90. 90. Yeah. He can move up to a probably, yeah. Um, Real quick, uh, side note. I just thought this was kind of funny. So, scrolling through, going down to number one, Andre White. And I see, for Cohen Russell, he's versatile with the ability to play in the slot or tailback. And despite his diminutive stature, it might be the fastest player in the conference. I just thought that was kind of funny, you know. Um, and, but like we said earlier, despite the fact that he's quite short, and I remember in elementary school, people used to, used to always make jokes about how short he was. Um, <laughs> he's crazy, so totally off topic, but just thought that was a little funny. So back to Cohen and the kid from Mechanicsburg. Sorry, I forgot your name. Um, Bruno. 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 Bruno, okay. Bruno Mars. I think they, if they raced, I think Cohen would win, just because I have faith in Cohen and Keaton. But that kid was fast, so I, I think one of the reasons why he did break away is because we didn't expect him to be that fast, you know? We expect him to be like, oh yeah, he's just an average, he's not Keaton, he's not Cohen, he's not even Sam, cause, or Isaiah, because they both have, I mean, all have really good speed. So you don't expect them to have great speed, like, expect him to have great speed like them. And then he came out and did it, and you're like, wow. So I think... I think all four guys from State High could definitely beat him in a race. Yeah. And I think they will track him down this year and will tackle him. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, I'll, before we finish up here, we're getting a little stretched. Short for, on time. Sh yeah, short on time. But 
we're gonna ask this for with all our all our like podcastees. Um, basically, when you talk about football, everybody's like, "Oh, you're talking about meat and potatoes." So, what is your favorite type of meat, <laughs> and how do you like your potatoes cooked? Favorite type of meat. So like chicken, pork, beef. Um, chicken alligator. Al- yeah, alligator meat. Chicken wings. Chicken wings are. Right. Never go without some good chicken wings. Chicken wings. See. All right, I gotta ask, what's your record? Record number chicken wings. Record of chicken wings. Yeah. What yeah. do you know? How many chicken wings is your record amount of eat- eating at once sitting? Let me ask you, what's your record? Thirty-eight. He beat me. <laughs> yes. To my knowledge, I think I have twenty-four. Were those like Altoona Curve chicken no, wings? No, no, no. This, this, like no, these were these wings. were solid chicken wings from Quaker Steak and Lube. All you can eat wing night. I have no idea how I did it. I've never gotten close to it again. But my <laughs> uncle can confirm my thirty-eight chicken wings. It was probably one of my proudest moments, and what? I felt awful. <laughs> what kind of wings? Uh, I mean, I, I go all over the board. I like variety in my meals, so I was I was everywhere, all kinds: barbecue, hot, Arizona ranch, extra okay. spicy, a sweet chili, any kind of chicken wings. I, mean, I, like them all. I, I just go for that classic barbecue there. Yeah, I go for the hot, and then the potatoes, mashed potatoes. Yeah. You know, I put I put a little cheese in my mashed that's potatoes. That's gonna be a popular choice. <laughs> put a little cheese in my mashed potatoes. So yeah. Um, so we got so there you have it. Four chicken four. wings. Right. For all of our fans, mark that down. First podcasty, we got chicken wings and we got uh, mashed potatoes. Solid combo for sure. So, yeah. all right. So as we finish up here, just a couple housekeeping stuff to do. You can contact us through our email, nathangrell at gmail dot com. Also, Nick Haas and I C K H A U S seventy five at gmail dot com. We got a couple emails. One from Ryan Franks, which was hilarious yeah if you um <laughs> ryan franks unfortunately was not able to pin down was not able okay. to pin down the green shirt kid but he gave us a few suggestions which was greatly appreciated so if again if you know a kid that has black hair and green shirt email us send us a picture maybe send us a name maybe we'll find him eventually we want him yeah uh you can check us out on facebook at state high pod basically our website is unfindable so the yeah. best way to get, and and if you guys don't have Castbox or we're on Apple Podcasts now. Yeah. The so announcements. That's nice for all you. Yeah. Uh, iPhone users. Out yeah. There. So basically, either download the Castbox app or download the Apple Podcasts app and find us. Uh, just search like State High Football and you should find us. Um, also, you can use the. Um you can just go to castbox.com and search yeah. State College Football Podcast if you're a desktop guy. Yeah, you'll you'll find all of our links to our website and stuff there. Um, yeah, so I guess we're going to finish out with a story. Ramsey has, he's going to sp- tell us a Spanish story now. Um, so me and Nathan are in the same Spanish, Spanish 2. We recently had a final, and we have two parts to our final. We have a speaking final and then a paper final. Um... I leave the room for a couple minutes. Oh, this is great. This is a great story. I'm just going to stay out of this. All right. I leave I leave the room for a couple minutes. I come back and she my name in Spanish is Rafael. So she yells from the back of the room, "Rafael, you're up next for the speaking final." Cuz yeah. And I go, "Oh my gosh, no." <laughs> and she's like, "Because you just got back, I'll let you study a little bit more and we'll let someone else go." I think it was Tanner Brandemark, but I was sure. I think it's Tanner Brandemark who had to go. And there was 15 minutes left in class, and I'm I'm like I'm like this kid will not take 15 minutes. Like this kid's pretty smart. He's not gonna take 15 minutes. I don't know if it's he likes me as a friend that much, or what. He took 15 minutes, and I didn't have to go until the week. Like the week, it was like, the next week. It was like it was a Thursday, so you got had to wait till Monday. Yeah, I so like, I had all those days to study, and so that's probably my biggest takeaway from Spanish this year, other than learning Spanish, is that story. Um, any stories for from you, Nathan? I I prefer to forget about the Spanish year. Come on, we got. <laughs> I told a story. You got to tell a story. I no no I do it. I have no Spanish stories to speak of. <laughs> So, well, on that note, um, 
thank you all for listening. Uh, make sure to tune in next week. I know we have Shane Cole coming out at some point. I don't think that's next week. That no. is actually we do not frame? we do not have a guest for next week. So if you're a player and want to be on the podcast, I'll be back again. Yeah, if hey, if it, no and one if comes on, if you want Ramsey on again, email us and vote for that. For sure, maybe he can be an uh, honorary co-host at some I point. Don't, we can't ask him what his favorite meat and potatoes are again. That's gonna be a little difficult. But hey, if if you are a player though, email us. We'll probably let you on the podcast if we know you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, thanks again for listening, and see you next week. This has been the State College Football Podcast. See everybody. There we go. I was going to plug my stuff, and then I was like, oh, good. Thank you, guys. See, that's pretty relaxed, isn't it? Yeah. See you, everybody.